Hey, Merrick here of Indie Traveler. Today we have quite an exciting video because I'll be looking at the new design of the Osprey Four Point. Now, the Four Points have always been a popular backpack. Uh, if you ask around for like a lightweight bag that is budget friendly, that is good to take on many different trips, a lot of people will just point you towards the Four Points. Uh, and I've been using one for eight years now as well. I have the Four Point Forty for eight years, it's kind of on and off that I use it, but um, uh, I've also owned the Osprey 4.55 and Osprey 4.0 Trek. Now the 55 actually ended up selling at one point because I wasn't so satisfied with it. Um, the 4.40 also, um, you know, there's a, a couple of funny things about the design of it that don't make that much sense. For example, where the laptop compartment is located. And I think over the years, other backpacks have come out that were a little bit smarter about some of these things. And so these other backpacks became easier to recommend. So I've not been recommending Four Points as strongly in the last couple of years, but maybe that will change now because this new design actually addresses a lot of the uh, kind of minor issues uh, that the previous edition had. So here's actually the Four Point 55. Um, it comes in four new colors. So actually an easy way to know if you're looking at a review of the older edition is uh, the older edition came in red and gray and that was it. And this one has four different color options. There are three main things that are different about this pack now. Uh, I'll get into the details a little bit later. I'll, I'll probably take the camera and, and show you some close-ups. But first, like what's different in the sort of high level view? This is the Osprey. 55, 4.55, which as you can see, is now a little bit, sh it's, it's shaped differently. You see? Um, the previous version of this was taller. So it was about this much taller, which actually made it bigger than carry-on size. And a lot of people kept asking, hey, can I use my uh, 4.55 as a carry-on bag if I detach the day pack that comes with it, we'll get into that as well. And the answer was always kind of like, maybe. <laughs> um, I've done it, um, but you kind of have to be lucky, or you had to be lucky in the past that um, the staff wouldn't like, um, ask you to put it in one of those baskets and then it would reveal that actually the backpack is over the uh, limit. But that's changed, this is 56, 55 centimeters tall now. The main pack here on the 55 has the same dimensions as the 4.40. So you can now definitely use this as a carry-on pack. If you detach the day pack, put that under the seat in front of you and just put this in the overhead bin. I think a lot of people will be very interested in that. On my blog, actually, uh, I have a 4.55 review that I did in the past and most people who come to that page are just wanting to know if you can use it as a carry-on. So yes, this is now a carry-on. How they're different is, is, is as follows. So the laptop compartment on the 55 is not in the main backpack. It's in the day pack. So they kind of assume that you're gonna use your day pack for your laptop or tablet or whatever electronic device you wanna store in there. And the Water bottle pockets are also on the date back on the 55. So you can see that here. And on the 40, those things are integrated into the main backpack. So that's the big difference. Of course, because the 55 does not have a laptop compartment in the main bag, that adds a little bit of packing space to your main compartment. So that's pretty cool. Now there's another twist here. Uh, Osprey has changed the way that the day pack kind of works. So now this day pack is called the Farpoint day pack. You get it uh, included with the 55. You also get it included with the Osprey Farpoint 70. And on these editions, you can kind of uh, put it in the back and, and hook it or like clip it to the main pack and then it becomes one big backpack or you can take out the day pack and attach it with little clips to the front um, strap.
straps. So that's cool, that's kind of how it always was. Uh, this allows you to wear it in the turtle shell style, one front, one back. I quite like that actually, uh, if I'm going through an airport or a bus station or something, you just quickly clip it in there, your hands are free, and um, the load is balanced, and uh, you can just be on your way. So that's cool. Now, the thing that's different in this new product line is that the day pack is also compatible with the Farpoint 40. So you could buy the 40, buy the day pack separately, and it won't you know, fit on the back. There's no mechanism to attach it, but you can clip it to the front. And this has been made sort of universal across various Osprey products. So if you prefer, for instance, uh, an Osprey Daylight backpack, you could buy that and you can clip it in. Um, I tested if it was actually compatible with my two-year-old Farpoint Trek, and it is. So you can even buy a Farpoint Trek and then get a day pack that clicks into the front. Pretty cool. So that gives you a lot more options and kind of configurations to think about. The second big change is that the laptop compartment has moved. It used to be, maybe I can show you that on my old Farpoint cord. So here you have Farpoint 40, and the laptop compartment is uh, in the front here, which is kind of funny. It's, it's unusual for the laptop compartment to be in the front, um, because if you just have your clothing in the main compartment and a laptop uh, in the front, I guess it's the back, right? Depending on your perspective. <laughs> Anyone on the outside. If the laptop is on the outside and that heavy weight is kind of moving around there, it isn't very well balanced in terms of weight. That's one issue, and I think a lot of people also say, look, it's not as secure on the outside. It's nicer to have it next to the back panel where it's squished between you know, all your other stuff and your back, and that's where your uh, maybe expensive laptop should probably be. There, uh, so on the 40, that's where you put it in the main backpack uh, uh, on the back panel. That's where the laptop goes. On the 55, it goes in the day pack. Now, I do think the day pack doesn't have that much padding on the back. So if you have your laptop in there as well, it is a bit like a plank. It's all right for a little bit of uh, you know, walking around or, or when you're in transit or something. But if you were to walk around all day with just a day pack and a laptop like against your back, it might not be that comfortable. But I do like the fact that they've moved the laptop compartment a lot. That was long overdue, so <laughs> that's cool. Third and, and final major change um, is the back panel. What they've added is like a trampoline panel that aids ventilation. Now this trampoline panel is not nearly as um, kind of spacious. There's not as much space between the panel and the back as on, on other backpacks like the Farpoint Trek, for example, but it adds like a centimeter or an inch or something there to uh, Make sure that you don't have a sweaty back so much. Also, another thing about the back panel is um, the shoulder straps are now attached to this kind of bar that is separate from the rest of the back. So there's a little bit of air between that as well, and that makes it very nice for ventilation as well. Uh, and finally, there is an adjustable um, harness to some extent. I, I saw on like Reddit subreddits where people were previewing this pack and looking at the images and they're saying, oh, it's gonna have a fully adjustable harness. I bet it's gonna add weight and that's gonna add complexity. Why are they doing this? Actually, uh, it's not <laughs> what people assume it is. Uh, it's not gonna, you know, uh, move up the harness by, you know, a huge amount. It's just gonna be a little bit. Um, I don't know if I can show that here, maybe later on a close-up, but um, maybe it will move the straps by about an inch and a half or an inch or something or three centimeters. Um, and that's really just intended as a tweak. So you still have a small to medium 
and then medium to large version of all of these. So you choose those based on like your torso length and, and on your height. And after that, you can still give it a little tweak by moving up and moving down this part of the harness. It's just a little uh, calibration you can do uh, that will make your backpack a little bit more comfortable. So I'm all for it. All right, so those are the three main things that are different. Let me get into the details a little bit now. Let's take a closer look at the back panel. And one of the things you may notice is that it has a bit more of a structure to it. Now I saw comments online from people who had only seen the product images, like on Reddit and stuff, who said, ah, the Farpoint has changed into the Osprey Porter, which is a, a bag that is more chunky and has a lot more structure to it. And I actually disagree. Like this has been enhanced a little bit. Um, I don't know if you can tell, this is my old Farpoint 40. And I mean, it's it's similar, right? But it's you can tell that this is a little bit less structured and this is a little bit more structured. But um, if you don't have anything inside the backpack, it'll just be, you know, the outside will be flexible. It's not like the Porter where the walls will stand up. And, you know, actually, to be honest, like the, the Porter, I'm not a big fan of. I had one and, you know, it's nice that it has a little bit more solidity to it, but uh, the back panel is really uncomfortable. The straps are not comfortable on it. And um, it wasn't quite carry on. And, you know, I understand that people are worried that the far point would turn into a porter, but I can say that it has not. It's just a far point with a, a little bit more, um, yeah, a little bit more of a frame that is a little bit better. So that's cool. So what else do we have here? So we have this trampoline kind of thing going on. Uh, just a little bit. Let me compare it to the far point track like this boing. That's a trampoline, right? Um, lots of space behind it. This is like a trekking panel uh, Much more advanced so that also exists if you want to do a lot of hiking and trekking this is a lot more comfortable a lot better, but the far point I mean it is nice. They also have this ribbing here and that's also to uh, ensure airflow and to make sure you don't get too sweaty. And um, what else can we show here? Here are the attachment points for the day pack. And again, you can use the Farpoint day pack that's included, but also some other day packs such as the Daylight will work with this. Um, here is a hip belt that is not attachable, but I don't think you really want to. There isn't the typical sort of zipped compartment here. There's like a stretchy pouch, which is kind of cool. I like it actually. Um, I usually forget about things that I put in a zip compartment in the uh, hip belt. Uh, so this will probably make me remember them more easily. And uh, of course there's adjustable uh, sternum straps that's been a standard feature for a long time. All right, so let's see how the day pack actually comes off. So if we move to the top here, these little straps is where the day pack attaches. If you open these little straps, you can take the day pack off. So that is different from how it used to be. Um, the Far Point 55 used to have a zipper there. So you would have to find a zipper and then doot, 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 um, zip on the day pack onto the main pack. And I used to also not really like that. I criticized that in previous reviews because uh, that just made it slightly more difficult to attach the day pack and then I just ended up rarely doing it. I would use on the previous edition the day pack in that kind of turtle shell configuration, but rarely fusing them together. And I think that will happen a lot more often with uh, this setup they have here with the two clips. I think it's just a lot easier, a lot quicker, um, and I think it's a big improvement. Let me show you what's going on on the inside, which isn't a lot, which is kind of the point of a far point. Uh, they're meant to be simple backpacks. 
no unnecessary pouches or gadgets or whatever. I uh, put a pillow in here for just demonstration purposes. Look at that collar. That's nice. <laughs> I have not been a big fan of the super lime green that Osprey has been using on the interior for a lot of its products for a number of years. Uh, I know they're doing that high visibility stuff so you can find your belongings, your items much more quickly, but I much prefer this wonderful blue color. Big improvement in my view. Um, as you can see, it's just a big space to put your stuff in, however you want it. Um, there's one mesh compartment over here. And here on the side is also a little pouch, which I think is new, that's not on my old Farpoint. You could still choose to use packing cubes here, or you could just stack your clothes and use these kind of compression straps to uh, keep them in place. It's up to you um, whether you want to use a totally minimalistic approach or use some packing cubes. Uh, but yeah, this is just one big space. Uh, it keeps the backpack lightweight and it allows you to figure out how you want to pack it. Ah, and one, one more point, like it's not a porter. People are talking about this looking like a porter. It's not, it, it's totally a far point. It is a, a flexible backpack and it doesn't have a rigid uh, side at all. And here's the day pack, which is nothing special, I guess, but it does the job. There are these two um, water bottle pockets that are pretty generous. There is uh, a compartment here which is actually pretty deep. This is not just for sunglasses or something. You can store a lot of items here. And there is a main compartment, which is pretty spacious. This is about 15 liters, uh, but it's not super spacious. So I try to put in a camera cube here. It was a Tropic Feel camera cube, but it doesn't matter uh, which brand it was. Uh, it didn't really fit in there, so uh, there are some limits to how much you can put in here. Uh, there is a laptop compartment though, and as I mentioned earlier, on the 55, the laptop goes here. On the 40, the laptop goes into the main backpack. Um, I put my MacBook Air 13 inch with a plastic case around it in here and it fit pretty snugly. I think anything bigger than that will not fit, so don't try to put your 15 inch laptop in here or something. Uh, of course, it will fit tablets, Kindles, whatever. There's also a little sleeve here, various attachment points and, and little doodads that is nice. Um, but here is the weakness, I think, of the day pack, which it used to be the case with the previous edition as well, and it's, it's still the case. The back panel is just super kind of flat. And why is it flat? Well, it has to be attached to the main backpack, right? So you cannot make this uh, more structured, you cannot make it more padded, it's just not possible. So they have to do this in order for the two-in-one concept to work. Uh, so I understand that that is a compromise. If you don't pack a lot in here, you won't really notice it, but should you put a lot of stuff in here actually, uh, then yeah, the panel may not be the best. You just know that when you buy something like a Osprey Farpoint 55 that this is what you're gonna get because of that two-in-one system. If you're really not a fan of this, you could buy a Farpoint 40 and add a separate date back to it. It does have more structure or more padding here and you can clip it to the front. That is a possibility. Look at the daylights, for example. All right, I've gone outside because my neighbors decided to start drilling through every wall in their apartment just as I was making a YouTube video. But now you can see me wear this backpack. That's nice. So to conclude a little bit, I think all the things that were a little bit iffy about the previous far points have been fixed and that is awesome. Um, if you'd like more information on the new versions, I'll put some links in the description below. One thing I haven't addressed yet is the weight. So uh, there were some suggestions that this version was gonna be 300 grams heavier than the previous version. I don't have any evidence to support that. Uh, I asked Osprey, they haven't gone, gotten back to me, but uh, I did see a brochure that they sent out to uh, retailers and it uh, says the weight 
of the main pack on the 55 or the 40 is 1.56 kilograms. So that is more or less the same as it always was. Uh, I also tried to weigh uh, the old and new version, but I don't know if my scale is like accurate enough, so I don't have any conclusive evidence there, but at least to me, it doesn't seem like they've changed uh, in weight very much. Uh, now, 300 grams may not seem like a lot, but uh, to the kind of one bag or minimalistic travel communities, that may actually matter a great deal. Uh, and I can relate actually, because on my most recent trip to uh, Colombia, I was limited to eight kilograms. Uh, airfares are kind of out of control at the moment, so I went for the cheapest option available, and they only gave eight kilos. So then you're really thinking, should I bring this item, should I not? Uh, and you're thinking about your luggage and how much it weighs as well. But as far as I can tell, the uh, Farpoint is still a very lightweight backpack. So yeah, laptop placement has changed. The back panel is improved. It is now carry on on the 55. That is awesome. And that makes me think that the Farpoint 55 is actually the best option. Uh, I still have to check out the 40, the new version uh, with my uh, own eyes. But uh, I used to tell people, ah, the 55, it's a bit weird. Get the Trek or get the 40 instead. But now it's different. And if you already travel with a day pack, which I always do, it has so many advantages, then the 55 is actually a really good option. All right, let's wrap this up. As far as I know, this is the first review that's been posted. So if you have any questions, uh, let me know and post them in the comments. Uh, and if you have any more information about the weight, actually, that'd be cool to know because I'm quite curious as well. But yeah, I don't really notice any difference. Um, yeah, check out the links below. Check out my blog as well for in-depth reviews of backpacks. And uh, let me just say happy travels. And as always, see you later.